Looking back at the time that I need to submit my J-1 waiver because I am subject to the 212 ERO home residency requirement, this is the thing I did. I have to secure a letter from our licensed psychotherapist to prove that there is really a hardship when it comes to my U.S. citizen spouse if I have to fulfill the 212E rule going back to the Philippines. We are going to talk about that in this video, so let's dive in and let the journey begin. <music> Welcome to Powerful Couple Journey. My name is Emery and we are going to discuss today the importance of getting a psychological evaluation with your licensed psychotherapist or your forensic psychologist. When I was doing my J-1 waiver, nobody told me about the evidences. The moment I got an RFE or request for evidence with my Form I-612, and the DS-335 I have, I have to secure all of the evidences that's showing the hardship towards my U.S. citizen spouse. Think about this for a second. Your hardship waiver is based on your U.S. citizen spouse and not with the J-1 holder. It is always based on the U.S. citizen because they value their people and you are getting a benefit through getting a J-1 waiver. Now, when we got the RFE, we are always thinking of what are the strong arguments that we're going to be facing and putting in our paper. So what we did was we sit down and think about the strategies on how to get this done. One of which is I was able to find an article in the internet that says in order for you to get your J-1 waiver approved, you have to find some people that are expert on dealing with emotional hardship. So one of which is getting a licensed psychotherapist. In my part, I am so blessed because my husband is already seeing a licensed psychotherapist here in Central Florida, which he did it prior for us getting to know each other. Then he was able to go to that licensed psychotherapist and relate to her the information that he was going through anxiety, depression, and some PTSDs because there is a chance for me to go back to the Philippines even though we got married already. He is so frustrated in a way that he thinks that he is a U.S. citizen and why does his wife has to go through with this process and putting him in a situation where he has to be evaluated with his emotion. There are three sessions that my husband has go through and the licensed psychotherapist put it in her letter. You have to secure the letter because that is the summary of all of the times that your U.S. citizen spouse have seen him or her and that is for the session. In our case, we have here in our website, powerfulcoupljourney.com, our sample letter from our licensed psychotherapist for the psychological evaluation. It is very important to have that even though your lawyer might not say it, but based on our own experience, I did it through DIY and I was able to get my waiver and now I am a green card holder. This is my way of sharing our ideas to you and this is our way of supporting as well our mountain pastors in the Philippines with the proceeds that we are receiving from you with the website powerfulcoupljourney.com. We have a lot of other forms and we also have statement of reasons for you to look at and I have a different kinds of videos to back those information. If you also wanted to see my timeline, here is the video about the timeline. That way you know when I started with my J-1 waiver process all the way to receiving my green card. We have our J-1 waiver helping hands group where there are a lot of J-1 teachers and J-1 visa holders that are part of this private group that gives their insights and share their ideas on how they get their J-1 waiver with a lawyer or 
with the process of doing themselves. This is going to be a long process. We started in June 2021 and I got my green card finally in November of 2023. So if I were you, make sure you have all the evidences and you have a very strong argument and not just emotional hardship, but include financial hardship, include medical hardship, and we have a lot of other details as well that you can put that one in your statement of reason. As a J1 teacher myself, I am so happy to share this video to you because I know that other J1 teachers are also seeking ways on how to waive the 212E rule home residency requirement because the Philippine Embassy or the EVP committee is no longer giving us the automatic no objection statement once you're married to your U.S. citizen spouse or you have your U.S. citizen child. So there are other ways that you can do. You can also do persecution waiver, but most of us are going through exceptional hardship, especially if you are married to your U.S. citizen spouse, because once you got your waiver, you can submit your form I-485, adjustment of status, work permit, form I-765, and your travel document, the form I-131. And then there's going to be a blessing to get a green card in a few months after your submission. It is going to be a very long process, so you have to have faith, you have to have prayers, and always make sure you and your spouse is on board with this part of the process. If you have gone to this part of the video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. That way we could help a lot of J1 visa holders that are seeking for a waiver and they might want to do it themselves. Please make sure to give them this information. If you have a lot of questions, please don't forget you can join our Waiver Helping Hands group. And at the same time, please leave a comment down the comment section of what are the things that you really wanted to know about J1 waiver process. As a Filipina, now I am a green card holder. I am happy that this is my way of sharing this to you and I'm also praying that you will get your J1 waiver approved. Thank you so much and God bless.